On a March morning, in a suite at the Essex House, half a century ago, Muhammad Ali's longtime friend and advisor Jean Kilroy received a call from the late Bud Schulberg, a writer whose contribution to the American canon includes The Harder They Fall, On the Waterfront, and a line most famously recited by Marlon Brando but seemingly uttered by just about every failed fighter before or since, I could have been a contender. Though Ali had just suffered his first loss, it was Joe Frazier who was in perilously bad shape at St. Luke's Hospital in Philadelphia. Packed in ice, his blood pressure racing, the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world was unable to stand or urinate, eat or drink. Schulberg heard a rumor that Frazier's condition was fatal. Ali heard Kilroy and Schulberg on the call. He didn't need it explained. But even as Kilroy grimly repeated what the writer had heard, the most confident man on the planet began to crumble. He was scared to death, Kilroy recalls. Like his heart had stopped. Oh, my God, Ali said. Oh my God. Oh my God. Ali got on his knees, pressing his head to the floor. Allahu Akbar. God is great. If anything happens to Joe, he said, I'll never fight again. Five decades later, well into a new millennium, the fight of the century, as Ali Frazier I was billed, watch on ESPN Plus, remains the fight of any century. As other sports are metaphors for what boxing actually is, combat, other athletes inevitably compare themselves to fighters. But Ali and Frazier remain the fighters to whom fighters compare themselves. They were more than epic antagonists. In a seething, divided country preoccupied with race, they were freighted with meaning, each made a proxy for something larger than himself. Ali's standing was earned the hard way, by refusing induction into the army during the Vietnam War. The decision cost him his title and an almost four-year layoff from the sport. Meanwhile, the man who won the heavyweight championship in his absence, the twelfth child born to Reuben and Dolly Frazier, sharecroppers from Laurel Bay, South Carolina, was unforgivably cast as the white man's champion. But if you can strip away the sociology and the politics, perhaps an even more arduous task today than it was then, their virtue becomes ever more apparent. Each man came wielding a legend in his left hand. For Ali, it was the jab, for Frazier, the hook. If they each recalled archetypes, the stoic and the fabulist, they were even greater together than by themselves. Together, they made an art of endurance. Of course Ali fell to his knees. They didn't just need each other. They needed to fight each other. Again. And again. And again. And the way that they did, the qualities with which they fought, their abilities to withstand both cruelties and physical punishment, feels today as if those prayers were answered.